A8. Um, these are the, the, the hash functions that are stored in the SIM card. Um, they're generally implemented as one hash function with the response being split in two. Um, the first version of A3A8 uh, is called Comp128. Um, in 1998, uh, yes, 12 years ago, this was reverse engineered and published um, and completely broken um, to the point where um, it's, uh, you can recover the, the secret key and effectively clone the phone uh, by sending it 150,000 chosen challenges. It's actually a, a collision in one particular round of the Comp128 function. Um, so uh, there's, there's subsequent work been done. Um, the initial 150,000 uh, challenges was for a, 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 what's called a 2R differential attack against each byte of the secret key. Um, subsequent work has extended that to 3R, 4R, 5R attacks um, and reduced it from 150,000 challenges to 80,000 challenges. Now, I don't know about you guys, but, but I wouldn't regard a 128-bit hash function as secure if I can disclose the secret key with just 80,000 challenges, 80,000 chosen challenges. Um, it's, it's totally broken. Um, unfortunately, um, lots of mobile network operators still use it. Um, they, they don't seem to care that, that SIMs can be cloned. They don't seem to care that there's, there's no real security here. Um, it's, it's what they use, so it's what they're going to continue to use. Um, their response to these, uh, these cloning attacks was to make the SIM cards self-destruct after 64,000 challenges. So instead of actually deploying a secure hash function, deploying something that, that has some semblance of security, they just, uh, just cut the, the SIM card off just before you get enough challenges to actually recover the secret key. So that's not much of a defense. Um, Comp128 uh, has been subsequently patched. There's uh, version 2 and version 3. Um, neither one has ever been publicly disclosed or publicly cryptanalyzed. Um, we do know that they're, they're very similar to the Comp128 version 1, so they probably suffer from the very same, uh, very same or very similar vulnerabilities. Um, but the, the simple reality is that uh, there's, there's lots of different A3A8 functions in use. Um, as it turns out, Comp128, the whole family of Comp128 functions has been, uh, because the version 1 function was, was broken so badly, um, the whole family isn't trusted by, by MNOs uh, generally. So although some MNOs do still use Comp128, a lot of them end up rolling their own hash functions. Um, and we all know how well that turns out. So there's all kinds of, of functions out there. There's all kinds of, of hashes in use. Um, who knows what kinds of bugs are lurking? If, if you can find a way to figure out what hash function is being used by your, your mobile network operator of choice, um, chances are there's, there's going to be a break in it somewhere. Um, the, the attack against V1 is, is very well known. Um, there's a, a, this link is for, for one example of a, a V1 um, SIM cloner. Um, this will work with the, the, the Lady Ada's um, uh, serial uh, SIM card readers. Um, clones a, a V1 SIM card in about eight hours. Um, none of these tools, none of these uh, Comp128 uh, cracking tools are open source. I've, I've not seen an open source one yet. I have seen lots and lots and lots of people saying, hey, I've just broken Comp128 version 2. Here's my binary. Please ignore all the rootkits and malware and downloaders and droppers. And so if you, if you do want to try cloning your SIM, um, it's, it's relatively easy to find code to do so. But please be careful. They're, they're riddled with malware. Run it in VMware. Um, and then just restore the image when you're done. So yeah, the hash function in the SIM, um, there's one that's been analyzed and broken. There's two more that have never been analyzed. And there's a whole bunch that nobody really knows what's going on. Um, not a particularly great situation as compared to you know, public uh, discourse on what hash function to use. So let's talk about ciphers now, um, A5. A5 is used to encrypt your traffic. Um, now, depending on, on what kind of traffic you're sending, um, you could get a, a different variant of A5. Um, the, the, the three known variants of A5, A51 is the, the, the most common variant. Um, this is the, the original uh, European A5 cipher. Um, A52 is a weakened version of A51 that was designed for export. Um, 
very, very similar. Uh, it's a, a very similar design of Cypher. It uses three irregularly clocked linear feedback shift registers, um, but slightly different um, construction. Um, A53 is a completely different Cypher, totally different. Um, instead of being a, an LFSR-based stream Cypher, it's a block Cypher. Um, it's it actually, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a block Cypher. Um, the point of it is that um, when you connect to my BTS, I get to tell you what A5 variant we're going to use. You have no input into this decision whatsoever. It's not like you can reject what I'm offering you. Either you accept the cipher that I'm offering or you don't connect to my BTS. It's as simple as that. How do you attack these functions? Well, A52 is deliberately weakened. Um, the, the year after the, the Comp128 break was published, um, A52 was broken. Um, it was broken so badly that from a few seconds of uh, recorded GSM conversation, you can actually recover the session key from the ciphertext. It's, it's about as bad as crypto breaks get. So assuming that we own the BTS, so you're, you're all connected to, to, to my base station here. Um, I get to choose which A5 variant uh, we're going to talk, and I get to choose the random nonce that, uh, that, that I use to authenticate you. So what I can do is, I can wait until you're on you know, AT&T, and I can sniff your conversation on AT&T. Um, we'll, we'll come back to the frequency hopping aspect of that. But the point is, I can sniff and record your conversation, and I can recover that random nonce. It's, it's sent in plain text. It's not supposed to be secret. Then when you connect to my BTS, I can negotiate A52 with you and replay that same random nonce which means that once you've started ciphering with A52 with the same session key, I can then break A52, recover the session key for that random nonce, and apply that session key to my recorded conversation from earlier, which means that effectively I can record your conversations and then trick you into connecting to my BTS and decrypt all of your traffic, regardless of which A5 variant you're, you're talking on your legitimate network. Um, hold, hold up, hold up, yeah, you'll, you'll, it, it gets better. Um, the, the, one of the, the main defenses that's been proposed against this, this sniffing and replay attack is frequency hopping. Um, there's a couple of problems with, with the frequency hopping implementation, not least of which is that the BTSs get to choose whether they tell you the frequency hopping sequence in plain text or in cipher text. And a lot of them will actually tell you the frequency hopping sequence in plain text before they've established the ciphering. So you can just follow along with the frequency hopping. Um, alternatively, and this is the, the, the really fun one, um, the USRP2 actually has oodles of bandwidth in it, so much so that it's feasible to record the entire GSM band for a given network operator. So you literally, you just say, right, AT&T, they're using this band from this frequency to this frequency. You record the whole thing, dump the whole band over gigabit ethernet, stream it to hard drive, and record it later. So once you've broken the A5 key um, and you've recovered that random nonce, uh, sorry, once you've recovered the random nonce and you've broken that A5 key, um, you can then figure out the frequency hopping sequence from your recordings if you want to. So the frequency hopping is not a defense at all. The, the sequence is sometimes sent in plain text, and even if it's not, you can just grab the whole band and just dump the whole band to this. It's, it's really good fun. Um, there is not even a pretense of forward secrecy in GSM. If I can record any of your calls at any time, at any time later that I get hold of your secret key or even just the session key that was used to encrypt that conversation, I can decrypt your traffic. It's not like SSL where you can negotiate an ephemeral key in the middle of the protocol that, that means that later on if I recover the secret key, I can't decrypt your SSL traffic. There's nothing like that in GSM. There is no forward secrecy. So A51 and A53, uh, we talked about A52. Um, A51 is a 64-bit stream cipher which uses a 54-bit key. Um, the way that they do this is just by zeroing out 10 of the bits. Um, if that's not a deliberate act to weaken the security of A51, I don't know what is. Um, why you would ever take 64 bits of key material and zero out 10 of the bits before passing it to a 64-bit stream cipher, I don't know. Um, even if those 10 bits weren't zeroed out, it's still just a 64-bit cipher. So 
it's viable to, to produce rainbow tables against a